Hi. Now we know that light pr propagates as waves, as waves of electro changing electric and magnetic fields. So in this video, we will study an important consequence of this, known as diffraction. Now what happens is, let us take a slit. Here is a slit, and here is a source. The source sends out all these EM waves in in such kind of wavefronts and so so these wavefronts approach this slit and by hydrogen's principle we can say that all of these will produce secondary wavelets and as a result we will see an interference pattern now this is known as diff diffraction where light in produces an interference pattern when these distances are comparable to the size of these wavelengths of these waves. So in this video and a few videos, we will study a case of diffraction, a very special case of diffraction known as Fraunhofer diffraction, Fraunhofer diffraction through a slit. So let us straight away go to the setup. Here is a source, a point source, okay, and from a distance of it, there is a slit, there is one slit, and there is a screen, fine. Now, since this is a, this is a point source, it emits spherical wavefronts, okay, and this distance, the distance between source and the slit and this distance the this is the let us call this b this is the width of the slit slit width this distance is very large as compared to the slit width so is this distance it's called distance capital d so d is extremely large than the slit the slit width so what do we expect to see? Well, of course, since this is very large, uh, we, we can say that all these wave fronts are very nearly parallel. Okay. And using Heisen principle, we can say that all of these points between these two slits will act as secondary wavelets. So all of these will produce waves. Okay. And all of these waves then will travel, they, they will travel, they will go on. And I'm just drawing two of them. Yeah. So you expect some interference patterns. So there may be some intensity, maximum intensity here, some minimum, then you might see a completely dark band or dark fringe. Let us see what will happen actually. Okay. Let me enlarge the setup. Here is our entire this our slit. This one, so I have enlarged it very highly enlarged. And let us suppose here is our screen. Again, this distance is neglig uh, this distance is neg negligible as compared to this one. But I am drawing to this scale just for simplicity. Now, let us, let us take a point right in the between, let us call this point at the P0, generally called as P0, and let us take this ray, now let us draw uh, these waves as rays, so this ray goes to P0, so will these two Okay, and these two, this one. So will other rays which are between these two. Now what do we see? The optical path which is travelled by these two rays and there is no optical path difference. Okay, so this, since there is no difference between these two, uh, the path difference becomes zero. 
Well, the phase difference, uh, how much phase will change, this also becomes zero. So we get a uh, constructive interference at uh, point P naught. So then uh, this becomes a point of high intensity. Uh, the point is right between these two. This will be by two. And this will this be by two. Easily we can show this. Now let us take another point, another point P, and we we'll, we shall work out what is the path difference. From this we can from the path difference we can make some more calculations. This is our hydra which is striking at point P naught. Okay. Let us say here's another point P and light rays go from something like this. Okay, this makes an angle theta because you know this also acts as a wave, so all these waves are propagating in that manner. Now, which uh what is the path difference? So clearly these two paths are not the same. So these two paths have a path difference. What is the path difference? Now we can calculate now you, uh, how we can drop a perpendicular like this. Something like this. Okay. So this angle becomes theta. Fine. This angle will become theta because you know easily this is 90 degree, this will be 90 minus theta. And this distance, the hypotenuse in this case will become b by 2. So this is the path difference travel, this path difference travel. So this wave travels an extra this much. And this this much is from trigonometry. The path difference, let us call this um delta x is b by 2 sin theta right? b by 2 and sine of this angle b by 2 sin theta you get the path difference now in these experiments in front of our diffraction cases we will first look at where the dark fringes occur so where destructive inter interference take place because at the dark the dark points, the dark fringes, the two waves or many waves in this case, many waves, infinite number of waves come and they cancel each, cancel each other out. So the resultant field, electric field becomes zero, the amplitude becomes zero and of course the intensity will become zero. Now, what if our point P, okay, is such that this P by 2 sin theta, let me write this down here, B by 2 sin theta is half the wavelength of the light which is incident on this screen, it's lambda by 2. What will happen? Well, we know a formula that, you know, that the phase difference is 2 pi by lambda times delta x the part difference and delta x is nothing but lambda by 2 because this is delta x and delta x is lambda by 2 in this case so we can say simply rub this off and you can say okay it's lambda by 2 a phase difference is pi what does this signify now phase difference of pi signifies that uh, these two waves will destructively interfere why? Because uh, cos pi becomes zero, and if you remember your formula for uh, the composition of two waves, it is. Let me write this down somewhere over here. Resultant is something like this: a one square two a one a two cos delta uh, cos times phase difference. This is the formula and you put, so a1 is equal to a2 because 
they are from the same source and pi uh, cos delta becomes pi cos pi is minus 1 so this will be entire thing will become zero and the the electric field at this point the amplitude of the electric field becomes zero how can we show this c but these are only from these two rays what about other rays because the infinite number of rays which we can take see what can happen is that the part difference between these two points the center the center and this point is lambda by 2 okay now let me shift this a little bit okay we mark this point okay. and this point a little bit below this so that this distance this very small distance is same but can we see okay if we shift this entire thing down this uh, the part difference right will will not change so the part difference between these two remains lambda by 2 so these two rays will destructively interfere so will rays from these two points so will waves from these two uh, from from these two let us take these two random points and from these two now we can consider infinite number of such points right this one there the many points between these two so we can make pairs of these two and we we'll get infinite number of such pairs so all the possible pairs which we can make one above this line one above the center of the of the slit will correspond to one below the let me say this is one this is one so it will correspond to a point below the center so that these two will destructively interfere waves from these two will destructively interfere and the resultant at p becomes zero another uh, another way to write is that b sin theta b sin theta is lambda the 2 and 2 cancels out and b sin theta is lambda this is a condition for first dark fringe now what if b sin theta this thing is equal to 2 lambda Okay, B sin theta. Let me rub this off. B sin theta is two lambda. What will happen? Now we know for a phase difference, or uh, if the part difference is lambda by two, they will destructively interfere. One way to do this is we divide both sides by four. We get B by four sin theta as lambda by 2 what does this tell us let me rub this off a little bit make things really clear now this tells us that okay we can divide this fringe width this uh, slit width sorry into four parts let us take this one this one and this one so the part difference between these two uh, b by 4 right this distance will become b by 4 this will be by 4 right so will all of these lengths will become one fourth of the total the total width now any wave from this point and this one okay so draw all these are waves uh, point P is such that B, B, B sin theta is 2 lambda okay and this distance is B by 4 now we can again say the similar logic that the part difference between these two waves is lambda by 2 and so the similar logic the phase difference will become will be of pi and then they will destructively interfere so any wave that is going from uh, that is starting originating from these two will destructively interfere and so the resultant amplitude will become zero similarly any wave starting from these two points okay 
these two will result in zero amplitude at this point P. Now, in same logic, we can make pairs of these two. We can make infinite number of pairs. So, let us say that this point and this point, we shift them by the same distance and we see, okay, the part difference but remains same. It's lambda by 2. So, pairs from these two will give zero net zero amplitude at this point. Similar, similarly, we can say that based on these two points which are below the center will result in zero amplitude at this point. We can, in other words, they are destructively interfering. But hey, we can make infinite number of such points between, uh, between the slit width. We can take infinite number of such points and we can conclude that the resultant intensity at a point P such that it is it follows that B sine theta is 2 lambda will become 0. This is a second dark fringe. And the thing is, this is general for any nth multiple of lambda. Okay? The condition is that B sin theta okay if it's n lambda then this will result in a dark fringe now what I want you to do is with similar reasoning show that intensity the intensity at a point again let's call that point P such that B sin theta is 3 lambda okay this will result in a dark fringe that's up for you so I hope you learned where dark fringes occur in this video and in the next video and a couple of videos we will see where bright fringes occur and how does the intensity vary across the entire screen. So thanks for watching and I hope this helps.